So today we're going to be unboxing and checking out the fresh new Nokia G11 budget friendly smartphone but because it's the Easter weekend they've only gone and bunged it inside of a giant chocolate egg. Cause I'd rather they somehow ensconce the phone inside of a giant bottle of single malt or an enormous pork scratching but that's pretty cool. And to help me crack it open and actually get to the phone inside uh, I'll need the help of a glamorous assistant. Okay do you want to give it a little tappy tap then? Yeah I do. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's put a dent in it. It's got spinners in it or elements. God, there's so much chocolate in there. So we've got one Nokia G11 and this time next week we'll probably have type 2 diabetes. So you can grab the Nokia G11 here in the UK right now for just 120 quid and for every phone sold HMD Global will kindly plant 10 trees in your honour, thus making up for that time you had a plastic chair bonfire in the back garden. So first up, what do you actually get inside of the Nokia G11 box? A box which, by the way, still smells very much like white chocolate. <sighs> well, you've got your Nokia G11 smartphone, of course. We've got about a tree's worth of random pamphlets and manuals, but don't worry, we're still nine trees to the good. Got a dinky wee power adapter. It's the two-pin model here because this is the European review sample. And you've also got one Type-C USB cable. And that's it, nice and easy, so let's crack on with the phone. Alright, so as far as the design goes, the Nokia G11 doesn't exactly shock and surprise, it looks very much like other Nokia branded budget smartphones. It's a 6.5 inch, not absolutely massive by 2022 standards, but it is rather rectangular in build with a very thick bezel surrounding that display, especially down below where you've got quite a fat lip. And as you can see, they're quite flat edges as well, but the Nokia G11 doesn't feel uncomfortable to grasp. And then flip it around back, you have a plastic back end, of course, at this sort of budget price point. What else would you expect? This is the charcoal version, but you can also grab the G11 in ice. It's a matte textured finish, so hopefully you won't show up uh, greasy smudges and other muck too easily. The camera chassis is actually fairly dinky for a 2022 smartphone, and as you can see there, it doesn't jut far from the surface of the handset either. No mention of Gorilla Glass up front on that display, but you do have a pre-installed screen protector just to help keep it free of nicks and scratches and scuffs. And at 189 grams, the Nokia G11's got a bit of heft, but certainly doesn't feel cumbersome uh, to wield or anything like that. Now, unfortunately, like a few other budget smartphones in 2022, it is still Android 11 on here, creaky old Android 11, not the latest, freshest Android 12. So while you are guaranteed a couple of Android OS upgrades with the G11, unfortunately one of those will be to Android 12. HMD Global is guaranteeing three years of security updates with this Nokia blower as well. And of course, after a couple of years, they may only be trickling through once every three or four months or so, but still, that's better to have that guarantee than nothing at all. Oh, and by the way, I hope you like my uh, wallpaper because it's Easter. I, of course, decided to go with a Halloween style thing. And as usual, with a Nokia branded blower, you do have a fairly stock version of Android. Very little in the way of tampering from the manufacturer. Although I have noticed increasing amounts of crapware coming bundled on these things, that's for sure. So, for instance, the likes of Spotify, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc., ExpressVPN, all come and chucked on here without your general permission. You've also got face recognition here on the G11 as well, so you can use face unlock to uh, boot into your smartphone, like so. Besides that, you also have a fingerprint sensor built into that edge-mounted power button, and so far seems reasonably reliable. Occasionally it takes me a couple of taps to actually get in there. Meanwhile, over on the opposite edge, you've got a dedicated Google Assistant button like a lot of these budget stock Android smartphones. And I've got to say, I do find this assistant button utterly pointless. Not really sure why it's a thing, because if anything, I just end up accidentally knocking it when I'm trying to fumble my phone out of my pocket or something. You've got plenty of other ways of calling up the assistant, like just swiping from a corner of the screen or using the little mic down here. The good news is if you do find yourself accidentally knocking it a lot, you can just knock it off in the settings if you go to the Google Assistant button section. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't remap it if you'd rather do that instead. Storage wise, you've got 32 gigs here on the Nokia G11, so a pretty meager amount. But the good news is you can expand that via micro SD memory cards. And you've actually got a separate slot here on the SIM tray as well, so you can fit in two SIMs and the memory card all at once. So let's move on to that 6.5 inch IPS display. And yeah, it's a fairly basic panel, as you'd imagine from a budget smartphone that barely scrapes over the £100 mark, but it's really not bad at all. 
It is only 720p HD, so yes, visuals aren't as crisp as some rivals. You can get some Poco smartphones around this sort of price with a full HD plus resolution instead, but it's still fine for just kicking back with some Disney Plus, some YouTube, whatever. I had no issues with those visuals really. The brightness level is fairly uniform, and you know what? The viewing angles actually aren't too bad either. Even when you tilt this phone away from your face, you can still generally see what is going on. You know, you get the usual darkening of the picture, the colours warp a bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as some other budget phones that I've tested out. And yes, colours aren't quite as punchy or poppy or vibrant as what you would get on an OLED panel, but they're not terrible either. You know, they don't look washed out or anything here on the Nokia G11. Got a dinky little nipple notch poking its way into proceedings when you go full screen, just, uh, just ever so slightly, just a, a little hump. That's all it is. It doesn't really disturb you too much. And you've got a 90Hz refresh option as well. So I've got to say overall for, again, a £100 smartphone, like this is a pretty decent display overall. However, on the audio front, it is just a basic mono speaker setup, just your bottom mounted speaker down here. Let's bump up the volume, see if it's actually okay. A53 review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so it's reasonably loud on that top volume. Not exactly gonna be shattering any eardrums anytime soon, of course, and not too tinny either. But of course, if you wanna get a truly immersed into your, your movies, or of course, if you wanna kick back some music or something, you're gonna wanna get plugged in. You've got a headphone jack up top. Otherwise, you've also got full Bluetooth 5.0 support if you wanna go wireless. Okay, so performance, and of course, as you'd expect, the Nokia G11, a bit limited in this area. It is running off the Unisoc T606 chipset, uh, backed by just three gigs of RAM, so very similar to the setup on the G21, and as you can see, they have very similar benchmarking scores too. So far, because you've got a clean stock version of Android, the everyday running seems okay. The occasional little sort of pause and juzzer here and there, as you would expect, but overall seems to be doing its job. So the G11 is of course best suited to everyday shenanigans like messaging, web browsing and so on. But in the spirit of giving it a bit of full on testing and also partly because I'm a masochist at heart, let's have a crack at Call of Duty Mobile. So first up, as you can see there, not a massive amount of choice when it comes to uh, bumping up the graphics quality or the frame rate, you're stuck on low and medium basically. And you know what? That actually wasn't a bad experience. In fact, I think I preferred playing Call of Duty Mobile here on the G11 compared with the slightly more expensive G21, where the screen just didn't feel very responsive at all. You got a 180 hertz touch response here, and that's perfectly fine for the likes of Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, and stuff like that, where obviously every poke and swipe needs to be quickly registered because otherwise you'll get a bullet in the face. Obviously you're stuck at the lower detail settings so everything looks a bit cruddy, but the good news is that I didn't see any obvious drops in the frame rate at all, even throughout a fairly action-packed intensive match. There's bugger all 5G support here on the Nokia G11, however, you will find some phones under £200 that do support a bit of 5G though, and I have rounded up the best budget 5G phones in a separate video if you are intrigued. But the big whoop with the Nokia G11 is the fact you've got a 5050 mAh capacity battery stuffed inside of that plastic chassis. And that combined with the fact you've got that really energy efficient Unisoc SOC stuffed on there, you've got that stock version of Android. So I reckon you get close to three days of use between charges as HMD records, as long as you don't punish it, obviously. We're talking light everyday use, just messaging, bit of web browsing and so on. If you're gonna be streaming a lot of Disney Plus or something like that, then you'll notice you'll probably only get a couple of days max. And the G11 does support 18 watt charging when it is completely out of juice, although you only get a 10 watt charger bundled in the box. So let's finish up at this Nokia G11 unboxing and tour with a squint at that camera tech. What you've got here is a 13 megapixel primary shooter, and if I learned anything off the Nokia G21, it's that the focus probably won't be particularly swift, especially when the lighting conditions are less than great. Here's some simple test shots I snapped around the homestead this past 24 hours just to give you an idea of what the G11 is capable of. And of course it is a very basic camera setup indeed, fine for everyday simple snaps of the kids or whatever. But they'll have to stay pretty damn still, especially when you're indoors, otherwise they'll come out as a blurry mess. As usual, you've got a variety of bonus mods slapped on here, including a portrait mode where, as you can see there, you can select a variety of different bokeh style effects. And yeah, you do have a dedicated night mode as well, although it doesn't exactly do a huge amount to brighten up or decrapify your photo. Yeah, the G11 can be a little bit slow when it comes to swapping between the different modes, especially when you swap to that video mode. I've seen a couple of pauses already. And there's no ultra wide angle shooter or anything here on the G11, but you do get a dedicated macro sensor. 
It's a very basic affair again, but it's fine if you want to get an extreme close-up of something. And then for your video shooting needs, well, you can't shoot 4K video, but you can shoot up to full HD 1080p video at 30 frames per second. So as long as the lighting conditions are good, you'll get sharp-ish visuals, pretty balls image stabilization though, so you want to keep reasonably still. And even though this thing apparently supports Ozo audio capture, everything sounds a little bit muddy and muffled, so not great quality. And then lastly around front, it's a very basic 8 megapixel selfie shooter, so again, don't expect too much from this thing. Oh, that right there, definitely one for the Facebooks. But again, you've got those portrait mode smarts, and it's absolutely fine as long as the lighting conditions are okay. And you can shoot up to full HD resolution video again using that selfie camera, although again, the audio quality, not fantastic, it kind of sounds a little bit like everything's underwater or something, so not ideal. So there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is the fresh new Nokia G11 budget from the smartphone. As you can see, grab it here in Blighty for around 120 quid right now. And for that price, I'd say it's pretty bloody good value as well. As long as you know the limitations, you know, the camera tech is very basic indeed. The performance is kind of limited as well, but you can still do a bit of Call of Duty or PUBG if you absolutely must. Got pretty decent display tech on there. You got your headphone jack, your expandable storage, all of that good stuff as well, although unfortunately when you buy the Nokia G11 in stores you won't get a massive chocolate egg around it. So there you go anyway, it'll be great to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!